Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. Let's do a pour today. A good old-fashioned dirty pour. And let's switch it up and do it on a circle. So I'm going to use this 10 and a half inch MDF disc. And before starting to paint, I'm going to get this prepped by putting a couple of layers of gesso down on it. Now, why am I going to gesso my board first? Well, first off, MDF is kind of like a tannish color. And I'm going to be using a white negative space for my painting. And I wouldn't want this color to show through. So giving the board a few coats of gesso first will give me a nice white surface to start painting on. Another reason is it'll help seal the MDF a little bit. Now, if you're going to sell your work, this piece I'm just making for myself, but if you're going to sell your work, you might really want to consider sealing your MDF or any wooden panel that you paint on with something like GAC 100 to really protect the painting from MDF or any other wood product bleeding into your paint over time. Gesso will help a little bit, but sealing it and then gessoing will kind of really make your surface really nice and archival. So that's just a tip. But like I said, this is just for me, so I'm just going to get away with a couple of coats of gesso. So I'm going to get that done. I've picked out my colors. Two cool colors, two warm colors. My background will be white. I'll have a little bit of black in the cup just for a little bit of contrast. These are all Artist Loft colors, and this is Brilliant Blue, Aqua Green, Yellow Ochre, Crimson, Black, and then again the background will be white. My formula for mixing is one part paint to four parts Floetrol and a little bit of water if necessary. And there's dimethicone in these two colors. And for my dimethicone, I use um, this coconut milk hair serum. I love this stuff because it smells fabulous and it gives crazy cells. Everything I used will be in the description box below the video, including my mixing formula. And now for the cup. Some red, a bit of yellow ochre, black. And I think that's it. And now a generous layer of white to drag through. Oh yeah, I'm doing a flip and drag. I don't think I said that. <laughs> It's something that I can pull tendrils from and blow on and, you know, all the stuff I love to do. <laughs> a little spreading. All right, I flipped my cup onto this card. I'm just going to slide it off here. And... Do that. See where that takes us. I don't remember putting that much black, but apparently I did. Seriously, only two of these colors had dimethicone in them. Just the blue and the aqua. And look at this. Seriously, if you're having trouble getting cells, this, it's like a no-brainer. So I'm letting this sit for a minute, and I'm just watching all the cells appear. They're amazing. And these are pretty, and this thing's really, really pretty. <laughs> I mean, it, and I can still see some happening. Like, as I'm speaking to you, I it's almost like I can hear them appearing. <laughs> well, I've got to tilt a little bit. I'm gonna move it super slowly, just to see what happens to them. This little patch is closing up. There was like a hole here, and that's fine. And these stretching a little bit is okay. I'm guessing I need to... Ugh. 
I think it's going to be little swipes. I was thinking of blowing, but I think that given how complicated the colors are out toward the periphery, except for this patch of red, if I blow, I'm going to create mud. So I'm not going to do it that way. But I mean, the goal for this was to have something that I get to pull and make tendrils and do my little Miriam happy thing. So I am gonna, I'm gonna start with a small palette knife and see what's going on. There's definitely paint under here. I can see it under the white. And I'm going to need to leave myself a little bit of a rag to wipe between. So here's a close-up view, or at least closer. See, some of this is so detailed. It's like I'm almost afraid to pull it because of... Uh, Oh, we gotta try. Maybe bring the white into it. Okay, yeah, I'm liking this better. It was a little too, like here too. If the goal was tiny cells that you examine close up, then this would be perfect. But because from a distance it looks like a patch of not prettyness, <laughs> there's a word, not prettiness, then it's kind of got to go. Pull the white up into it again. And then pull some back down. In order to keep it from getting too dark, I think bringing white up first lets me sort of open up some of the brighter colors when I come back down. I'm putting in some white instead because I kind of want it to be a little more open, kind of more like that. And I wasn't getting that enough, so I think I need more white down here to get that to happen. Maybe. I'm hoping. And then here, I've got a little bit of an issue. The When I dragged the cup, I broke up this area, so like this is canvas here. There's no paint here. I don't want to fill it in with white because then it would separate out this ball and I don't want that. So I'm trying to figure out how to connect this to this. Well, I try. Maybe if I just add color. Like if I add a drop of blue and then. Let's try red. And there's a teeny tiny bit left in the cup. Um, now I've switched tools that I can be more precise.
I'm so quiet right now. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm concentrating so much. It's, it's so crazy. I'm like looking to see where I'm going to start my next pull. I love making these things. <laughs> Seriously, it's like a game. And then when I pull them and cells happen in them, oh my gosh, tears well up in my eyes. <laughs> I just love them. And then the other kind that I really like too is like when I pull it out and the white sort of compresses it and there's sort of like a shadow around them. Oh, that's so beautiful to me too. I know this one should be fun because it's going to be red. Oh, well, maybe it won't. I thought for sure it was going to be red because it was red at the... I mean, there was some red in it, but it's not as red as I was expecting. There were other colors underneath. All right, let's see if we get some red here. Just a little again. I like the look of these. This is very different than the ones I usually do. Usually I get a lot that have this look to them, but this really thin sort of hair-like ones are way cool too. The paint is compressing. I think it's because I put more paint down than I usually do. So there's the weight of the white paint, there's so much of it is sort of crushing all the tendrils that I pull out and it makes these really thin, delicate ones. It's kind of cool. It's a very different look than the ones I'm used to seeing. So here I'm thinking I'm going to pull, I, I'm definitely thinking I'm going to be pulling red now, but I can see that there's color under the white. I don't know if you can. Let's see. I can... Like, there's a shadow under here, so when I go to pull at it, I think I'm going to get something else. Yeah, there's blue underneath. Okay. Couldn't tell what it was, but I knew there was something there. <laughs> Oh, I'm in love. There's still some blue or something, because I can still see the shadow underneath. So... Apparently there will never be a red tendril. <laughs> no matter how much I think I'm going to get a red red, I'm just never going to get one. Nope. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's almost funny at this point. Oh, can't seem to happen. <laughs> I'm just not even going to try anymore. Ooh, this is going to be fun because this is really dark here. This one was so pastel compared to every other one on this canvas. And now... Oh, wow. Look at that blue. Mm. Oh, wow, wow, wow. A little white up in here, just a tad.
What I wasn't liking here was that it fell off the canvas, you know, in a way that it didn't do it anywhere else. So in this sort of like solid chunk. So I want to break it up a little bit. Just a little, not a lot. Here. That was when I was swiping in this direction. Everything kind of radiates this way, so that's kind of going in the wrong direction for me here. Well, I'm calling this done. While I have you zoomed in, let me sort of do a little spiral so that you can see the details. And then I'll zoom you out. This was a remarkably satisfying bore. It let me play and do me. It came at a good time, too. Life had some twists and turns recently and kept me absent from this channel for a couple of weeks, and it felt like an eternity. But all's well, and I'm looking forward to making a ton of videos this year. And you can help by using any of my Amazon links to get you to Amazon when you're going to go Amazon shopping. It'll help me get supplies to show you more and more ideas. I've been keeping track of the questions you have and things you'd like to see, so if it's in my power, I will try to film as many as possible. Now, answering comments is becoming more and more of a challenge, so I may only be able to leave the little red heart letting you know that I read yours. I may not be able to answer every single one, but I do read every single one that shows up in my comments feed. So, by all means, please keep commenting. And just a tip, because of the way YouTube notifications work, it's much easier for me to see a new comment than a response to a comment that's more than like a couple of days old. Like if you write a response to a comment that's a month old or something, I may never see that. But if you're responding to somebody else, you have to do it that way. It's wonderful to be back with all of you, and I so hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know with your comments, a thumbs up, and remember to subscribe. It's easy if you touch my picture that just popped up, if you're on YouTube, not on like Facebook. I don't think you see it on Facebook and stuff. As always, thank you for watching. May the pores be with you. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye now.